As many of you know, my personal favorite video game franchise of the last decade is the Metro series. A terrifyingly beautiful world filled with bleak emotions and dark energy. Part of that comes from the gameplay and story, but a majority comes from the atmosphere of the underground metro system. 4A Games manages to achieve a sense of depression and oppression because of how they designed the world in such a way as to let you walk and breathe in a cruel and unforgiving reality that the denizens of the metro endure. To give you the simple version, Metro 2033 is broken into chapters, as is its sequel, Last Light. Within each story, you'll venture through three types of levels, each with their own sense of atmosphere. And in today's video, I want to go over each level type with their own examples. Also, know that these are examples from Metro 2033, as I have a different topic to discuss for Last Light. The first variety are the levels where you're venturing underground, either on your own or with a companion, engaging in combat against both man and beast. These parts make you feel lonely, even with someone there along with you, and it's partly because your protagonist RTM doesn't speak outside of the chapter loading screens via journal entries. It allows you to put yourself in the shoes of RTM and feel like this is what it would be like in a bombed out Moscow, Russia. Environmental storytelling is displayed from the ghosts that haunt the tunnels and monstrosities that have overtaken once populated areas. It's dank, dark, and covered in debris and rubble, making you question how it got like this. The best display of this in 2033 is the chapter that involves Artyom and his newfound companion, Khan, as they travel through a series of tunnels that are inhabited by the paranormal forces wandering and trapped in an endless loop where they are destined to repeat the same fate that they experienced over and over and over again until the end of time, never truly getting the rest. This also happens to be the area where a lot of the creepier lore of the Metro Universe is explained making for an informative but also claustrophobic atmosphere where the player feels trapped, just waiting for a break in suspense. A battle raged here long ago. The defenders still man their stations. Follow me, but remain at my back. Cast on a lapiario manto. Castone Lapio Asterion Manto Alum Ram Om Alum Ram On Castone Lapio Asterion Manto Castone Lapio Asterion Alum Ram Om Alum Ram On Castone Lapio Asterion Manto I'd rather that remain a secret. This is personal, my friend. I was with them when they died. Only I survived. The second type of the level is above ground. The theme here is all about survival. The story spends so much time going on about how dangerous it is above ground and how many unknowns there are up on the irradiated soil. Blown up buildings and brown vegetation dot the land. You also run into creatures above that you normally wouldn't encounter. There's the gas mask and filters that are required to even step foot on the soil above the underground. You must keep those stocked up if you truly want to explore and see everything hidden around. However, nothing, and I mean nothing, has come close to the superb design of the library and archive portions. The minute you boot up this chapter, you are faced with the task of making it through a dilapidated library where they aptly named Librarians Rule. These beasts roam the halls and can easily kill you in just a couple of swipes. You can fight back, but what makes this so amazing and tense is the fact that the developers give you the option of fighting the creatures to death or engaging in the most intense staring contest I've ever experienced in a video game. Seriously, the AI will stare you down and you must not break eye contact or make any sudden movements unless you want to be assaulted by these disturbing creatures.
Each encounter with them is a battle within yourself as well as against them, as you remain calm and collected patiently waiting for them to move on with their patrol patterns. Another detail I noticed while recording this portion of the footage was just how ambient it all is. There is no music whatsoever at any point during this brief jaunt through the library, further adding to the intensity of that the player feels. There are little visual and audible uses of foreshadowing, like the demon outside flapping its massive wings as you were staring down one of the many librarians. You're then greeted by that same demon, and then somehow thrust it in between a battle with two of the most threatening metro creatures you'll discover. Many details, both large and small, go into the design, which overall makes everything more amplified, tension, suspense, and anxiety. The third and final level type are the settlements. Drenched in atmosphere, you can get a strong sense of how the people of the metro system operate, mostly out of fear and oppression. You can think of these areas as hub worlds, where you can buy and trade different goods with the military grade bullets you find throughout your travels. RTM goes in and out, interacting with the civilians of each station, and we as the players get an understanding of just how harsh the living situations are. The terrain is difficult to traverse. You can't go around it since the tunnel roof is given in, and all the space between the carriages and tunnel walls is completely filled with soil. There was something weird going on inside the train. I'm a rational person. I don't buy all that mystical nonsense. So I thought it was rats and the like, you know? Sure. Parents die, leaving kids without a mother or father, or in some case, both. People become straddled with fear as enemy factions like the Nazis or the Communists beat them down both physically and emotionally. Color usage, which I will go more in depth about all that in an upcoming Last Light video, is very minimal. Stations are crowded, almost overpopulated. Supplies are limited and the only thing holding people back from losing their minds is survival. It's not the ideal way to live, but rather, it's the sole way to live down in the metro. The first time I went through this game, I spent at least 15 to 20 minutes exploring the market, which is one of the first populated stations that you'll come across. I didn't spend that much time there because of the collectibles or mission objectives, I drained that much time because there is a ridiculous amount of dialogue happening in that one little area at all times, and this goes for all hub areas in the game. This is where the Metro series shines brightest, ironically in the darkest parts of the game. This is the biggest asset that the franchise has going for it. Exodus launches in just a couple weeks, and here's hoping that even as the characters in the future of Russia's journey approaches its end, it doesn't lose what made it so special in the first place. Well guys, uh, that's another video down. Um, just uh, wanted to take the opportunity, as I do of every video, to thank you guys for sticking around and uh, checking out the contact that I offer. Um, your boy has been super busy with work and has been living his best life. And by best life, I mean his worst life. And by his worst life, I mean his okay life. Um, just been a lot of work, 54 hours a week, and uh, still trying to crank out videos. Um, so I guess this is I guess going to be like a mini, mini update thing we got going on here. Starting with uh, the fact that this video is a lot shorter than it normally is um, with, with my, uh, I guess, analytic videos. Uh, I'm kind of trying to focus on doing shorter videos so I can pump out more content because the longer video, the long form style isn't going to work with my schedule as many hours as I'm working at right now. Um, I'll get to them when I can. I do plan on doing one for a deep dive for a Metro Exodus when that game releases on the 15th. Uh, I'm also planning on uploading my playthrough of that game. I don't know if I'm going to do it on this channel or if I need to make a second channel because I don't want to overload this channel with uh, a crap ton of uh, videos that some people may not be interested in watching. But we'll see. Maybe I'll do it on this channel, honestly. <laughs> but um, anyways, I do want to thank you guys just for 
coming around and checking out my content and then subscribing. And I think we're at 586 subscribers now, um, which is a lot more than what I had. I think I started at like 400 and, uh, 401, 402, something like that. Um, and kind of been growing over the years. Um, but it's just little by little. I just need to be more consistent. But again, I thank you guys for everything you guys have been doing and uh, subscribing and, and checking out my content and leaving me feedback. I really do appreciate the feedback a lot. It helps me improve. Um, so I know I'm working on other videos as well. Uh, so more than style, this short style. Um, so I'm working on a video for Metro Last Light, as I stated in the beginning of this video. And I'm also working on one for a couple of the games, such as The Evil Within, the Far Cry series. Um, Let's see, Resident Evil. I do want to play Resident Evil 2. I want to do a review on that one, uh, or a video on that one, as well as uh, Resident Evil 7, because I just started playing that for the first time, so. We'll see. Oh, as well as Smash Brothers. I'm actually working on a montage for Smash Bros, because I'm actually, it's one of the games I'm actually trying to take seriously and, and improve it, so. I thought it'd be cool to make a montage and upload it to my channel here shortly, so. But anyways, guys, I do appreciate you guys for checking out my video today. And if you guys have any feedback, comments, or you want to suggest something that I review or discuss, uh, leave it in the comment section below. Anyways, like, subscribe, share if you want to, do any of that stuff if you want to. It's up to you. I'm not here to force you to do anything. I do love you guys, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.